everyone, welcome to Market Central. I'm DJ Mark, your host, and right now I'm over here in Flushing Queens at Cosmic Con. I'm gonna take you inside, I'm gonna be showing you some animation, collectibles, and comic books, and much, much more. Let's sit back and enjoy, let's go have some fun. Keith Williams, how's it going, brother? Hey, doing good, doing good, thank you. Okay, Hi, Keith, guys. all right. Can you explain a little bit of your childhood as you was growing up? Well, let's see. In, well, a lot of my childhood involved comic books. Uh, that actually started with my grandma. Uh, and I was like probably like seven or eight yeah. when I got like uh, my first comic book. It was a Batman book. Uh, and like every weekend, bunch of books for me to, you know, like, uh, read, so it's always really cool, it's basically DC comics at the time, and, um, you know, I got, I, I, I really, I really loved it every, every weekend, uh, but, but it got to a point where I started buying my own books, <laughs> when I started getting older, and so she stopped, and I just took on from there. Oh, okay, so what made you get into the drawings as you was coming up? Uh, I, I like drawing, but I, I wasn't, you know, like, uh, thinking about doing comic books, but after reading uh, DC stuff, and mostly, really, at that point, Marvel, I, 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 I love the artwork, I love the action, the style, stuff like that, and a friend of mine, me and a friend of mine, uh, said, why don't we just try and make our own comic books, and uh, we lived in the projects, and uh, we hung out in the hallway in the projects, and uh, just... Got some paper, got some pencils, and just started drawing and writing our own comic books. Yeah, so, who were your favorite superheroes as you was coming up? Uh, favorite superheroes, Batman, of course. Um, I didn't really know too much about Marvel at the time, but, I, but for DC, I loved The Flash. That, that, was, that was a great character. Um, who else? Uh, Hawkman. You know, the, uh, the Metal Men. Uh, when I was getting older, it was like Spectre and uh, you know, like, uh, stuff like that. Yeah. Green Lantern. Oh. Okay, which cartoons was you was looking that you was watching as you was growing up? Oh, the Superman, Aquaman Hour, uh, the Lone Ranger uh, cartoon they had on at that time. Um, oh gosh, what else? Uh, Mitor, Mighty Mitor, Moby Dick, uh, Space Ghost, yeah. Galaxy 3 uh, they uh, had a uh, Super President, <laughs> Super Six, uh, wow, Mighty Mouse, uh, yeah, you know, the Superman television series, the George Reeves one, yeah, yeah. There, was, there, was, there was actually a lot of stuff back then. Yeah. So uh, what, made, what made you want to become an, an inker? Um, well, my penciling wasn't just there. anatomy and things like that, but I, to draw it, I, I just wasn't there for like Marvel and DC yet. So I decided to shift my focus to inking, see how I would turn out that, you know, like that way. 
Um, I did the uh, mobile hand uh, tryout book that had uh, John Romita Jr. Seniors, uh, oh no, Jr. Jr.'s uh, blue line work, pencil line work in there. And uh, that's what I used uh, to show around to Marvel and to other different places. I got to meet uh, Don Curlin, who saw the book, who saw the uh, tryout pages, and he liked them. Uh, you know, and he, he gave me pointers, and he didn't live that far away from me, so I was able to visit. And uh, I was working at my old school as a paraprofessional, I got a phone call, asked, and it was Don asking me if I was interested in doing background inking uh, for one of the uh, mobile inkers. And I said, yeah, sure. And uh, it was Mike Esposito. Uh, he was a great inker at the time, and uh, it was on mobile team up. Uh, with him as the anchor and Ron Friends was the pencil. Okay. Yeah. So why you feel it's best for you to, to appear at, you know, Comic-Con to display your uh, product? Well, it, it, keeps, it keeps me out there, especially since, you know, like right now I don't, I'm not really on a book. So, um, you know, like, uh, it keeps me out there, lets other people know that I'm alive, and, uh, and you know, I get to meet the fans, and, you know, like, you also get make connections, you know, uh, with, with some other people that are interested in the comic book field doing uh, independent books and things like that, you know, you can get together and, you know, help we work out a deal to do a book. Okay. Why do why you feel that social media is a great way for you to promote your platform? Oh, well, yeah. Uh, like, places like Instagram and uh, Facebook, it's, it's great. Get a lot of people to get to see stuff, and um, some and sometimes they, you know, like they like it, you know, because sometimes I guess they just look at it. It's all right, you know, like, it, but but it, it gets people to know that I'm out there and that uh, and, and they can get to see my work, and you know, if they're interested, they can either want to buy it or hire me or whatever. Oh, it's great. Yeah. So why you feel that you know people can order stuff online to make it easier? rather than travel to the destination. Well, yeah, yeah, you can, you, you can order lots of things online. Uh, with, with me, though, it's more, it's more like uh, being at the shows and uh, doing it that way. But a lot of people do have websites, and uh, it works, works great for them, you know? They can, uh, you know, put all their stuff out there, and people look at it if they're interested, they'll buy it, and you just gotta send it out by the mail. Okay, and last one is that how you end up hooking up with Comic Con for different, you know, appearances. Well, that that is, um, I guess, the work that I do. You know, like uh, the, the people have seen my work, and uh, they, they they think that I guess that I'm okay enough to be able to uh, appear at the <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, for the record. Who is your five top superheroes of all time? But you gotta include a female in that batch. So ladies first. Uh, okay, well, uh, love, love Scarlet Witch. Okay. She's great. Black Widow. It's been, she's fantastic. Uh, Batgirl. Batgirl, of course. Uh, gee, of course. Uh, Sue, Sue Richards. The invisible yeah. girl, the invisible woman. Yeah. She's very powerful. Yeah. I, I actually think because she's one of the more powerful people that are in the Marvel universe. And of course, Phoenix, Jean Grey. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> and give me your top five superhero males. Male. So okay. You get... So you got Batman, of course. Batman's extremely smart. Um, Spider-Man, of course. Uh, gosh, who else? Professor X. Okay. <laughs> oh, I love this character. Um, and, oh uh, gosh. Who else? Why am I blanking out now? Thor. Okay. Oh, Thor. I love the Metal Men. Yeah. They're great. Okay. Spectre. Spectre. Okay. And for the record, I promise this will be the last one. Give me two villains that you like. Two villains? Magneto, because, you know, you never know if he's totally a villain or not. Okay. I, I, I like this character, Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor. Yeah, Lex Luthor, because the, the only reason why he's a villain is because he's so jealous of Superman. <laughs> Come on. He, he's making all these robots and, and, and creating these monsters and stuff like that, you know? And I mean, 
back in the town. Only because he doesn't like Superman. <laughs> okay. I, I, Keith Williams, I appreciate your time. Thank you. I wish you best on all the success in the world. All right. Hello ladies, introduce yourselves from the left. Hi, I'm Jen Silverman, I'm Okay. I'm Emily Kramer and we're all voice actors. Okay. It's Matthew and Mo. So um, explain a little bit of your childhood as you was coming up before you ever got involved with voice acting. Um, I actually used to do children's modeling as a kid and I would go on movie series in the city and do commercial stuff. And I had at the time I hated it because I was a And then it was one of those, how I know that what I know Okay, and as for Emily Kramer? As for me, I grew up doing theater. I'm a Broadway actor. I did Broadway stuff for about eight years and realized how much I love animation, how much I love voiceover, how much I love the specificity of the very, uh, very picky with how a cake sounds. It makes me, it makes my brain very happy, so that's my focus now. And, uh, yeah, I've just been doing voiceover and animation for since about 2018. Okay, and Samantha Cooper. Okay, so tell me what happened when you got your first voiceover session when you was cast. Um, it was, so this is post pandemic, so a lot of things were being remote, so we had to build our studio from the ground up. So I took classes with Derek Dunson, who's the director of Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, yes. Been doing auditions prior, so I got the email in the summertime. The same weekend I got my driver's license, so I was ready to try all the clips and just scream happy thoughts. Okay. Uh, Alright, tell us about your first voice act. For voiceover, it's the same for me. I, I took Darren Duncan's class. This is a uh, great one for Darren Duncan. Oh, okay. <laughs> great class. He uh, auditions us for class and classes for class and he voice acting for Indio. So that's where he got it. That's where he took me from. And from there, he sent me to Pokemon and other places. Oh, okay. And uh, tell us about your first voice lesson when you was cast. Yes. Okay, and um, what would you say is the best part about doing voiceovers? Just doing what I love, having uh, take my childhood to somebody else for their childhood, and just being an influence for everybody else. You know, it's just doing what I love and having fun doing it. Okay, what would you look? What's the best thing you like about voice acting? What's the best thing you like about voice acting? Okay, and um.
right, thank you. So, what's your name? Oh, my name is uh, Frank Casuto. Frank Casuto. Uh, illustrations. Oh, okay. So, how long you been, um, you know, doing this now on? We've been uh, drawing since I was like two years old. <laughs> so, I was always, that's always something I did. Uh, conventions. Yes. We've been doing, um, probably for like, it has to be like eight years ago. So okay. We started, um, we were coming out with a new uh, graphic novel. So, it's our historical graphic novel based on true events. So we have yeah. this um, right here. This is the history behind it. So, oh, okay. basically what happened was this soldier, while digging a foxhole in World War II, found this box, and inside the box were these documents from this lost Italian ship from the Napoleonic Wars. Yeah. So he did further research, and then basically all of this goes through his research, and he found out that it tied to Etruscan mythology and demonology. So this goes into that, and in the back of this book is the actual document Translation. Yeah. So we took the facts from this and we based our fiction to make our art historical graphic novel. So this is actually the preview for it. The book's coming out soon, but this is the first 10 pages of the graphic novel. Yes. And uh, if, you're, if you're a horror fan and if you like the old school stuff, you're going to love this. It's horror, mythology, adventure. It's a good read. So okay. get a chance. We're gonna, it's going to be out soon. So um, so how what was it that you decided you wanted to take your craft more seriously? I, I think I always uh, I always wanted to be an artist. I think uh, probably probably like you know like after college I kind of saw other people doing conventions and then kind of you know I went into teaching I'm an art teacher and then uh, one day I just kind of thought like I have to like the time is now I have to you know put this book out you know put my artwork out there. You know? I think after I was interning for Marvel for a while, and it was at a time where everyone was being laid off and uh, they were doing kind of budget cuts. So my boss was laid off, and then he had to get rid of all the interns. So I was like devastated at first, and then I went into teaching. But then I said to myself, I'm like, no, I have to do this. I have to you know, go forward and do my artwork also. So um, that's when I started to start to the mention to start you know, the book out there. Okay, how you come up with the ideas of um, with your characters that you uh, draw? Um, basically, oh, with my characters, it's, it's very, uh, very spontaneous. It's kind of like there's, there's really no plan for like drawing creatures. I think it's just that you you start drawing and whatever kind of manifests. That's how it happens. It's, it's hard to explain, but I never really go in with a, a definite plan. Like halfway into the drawing, something something clicks, and then you know, okay. hopefully it turns out okay. So. Okay, you a big fan of uh, horror films? Oh, all my life. Yeah. Love the Universal horror movies. I love uh, Hammer films. Um, I like some. I'm not like big into like the gory stuff, but uh, I liked um, like Fright Night, The Lost Boys, the 80s. You know, so I'm more into the classic horror stuff and like the atmosphere stuff. Okay. What would you say is your top five horror films of all time? Oh man, I don't know. That's uh, that's a, that's a hard question. I, I just say it, it really depends on the mood that I'm in. If I'm drawing something and I, I you know, have to have a movie on in the background, sometimes it's just you know. I mean, I, I love the old Universal ones. Um, you know, Dracula was my favorite growing up, but I mean, like as far as like great movies, I remember I showed my kids like the Creature from the Black Lagoon. Like, you know, it's a little more like action packed, you know, the whole thing. Um, so it's hard to say. I don't know. I think it's hard to be. Okay. Well, what do you think about the horror films in today's society? Um, I haven't seen too many of them. I, I just, um, I think a lot of them are kind of missing, you know, they're missing that atmosphere, they're missing the story uh, in favor of like the gore. I mean, that's my opinion. Some of them, some of them, you know, have a good balance, but oh, okay. I feel like there's something missing that the old ones had. So, yeah. Okay, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very All much. Alright, wish you the best. Thank All right. you. Okay.
that'll do it today's show. I'm DJ Mark. I thank y'all for watching Marky Central. See you next time. Peace.